going on guys? Another flea market Friday special. Today we have the thump. That's right. Be prepared. Thump car audio, the T3006. Look at them specifications. So I'm talking about MOSFET power supply, two ohm stable, 800 watts, base boost, 45 Hertz, low high, X over switchable, circuit thermal, overload protection. Let's open it up and see what it's all about. Before we open the amp up, let's check out the car audio directories from the old school stereo library, the 2001 and 2002. First up, the 2001, we see the amp listed here, 450 watts by two, yeah right. And the MSRP 289, even the dimensions they have listed wrong. In 2002, we show the prices dropped a little bit by $10 to $279. Really nice box here. Oh, it's made in Korea. It's a Naba USA, Rancho Dominguez, California. Oh, look at this. We even got the Manuel Noriega. Let's see, what model do we have? I'll have to pull it out and see. I'm not sure which one it is. See what the ratings are. It does have specs. Let's pull this out. It's still got the high level inputs and screws and some extra fuses. This is not factory shrink wrap. I did wrap it up because I have taken it out before, but you guys aren't supposed to know that. This is like fresh. Ooh, look at that, shiny. Ooh, man, that thing is sharp. What I cut you? Okay, so now we can see the T3006 model. T3006, RMS power at four ohms is 200 watts. RMS power at two ohms is 300. And RMS power at four ohms mono is 400. Wow, is that legit? I don't know. Let's take a closer look at the amp. All right, let's swing it around. Man, that thing, you cannot believe how sharp those edges are, man. Good Lord. Okay, so here we have the speaker outputs. Everything is gold plated. We have power inputs. It looks like eight gauge, two 25 amp fuses. So that's 50 amps of fusing. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that math thing. You big dummy. According to the owner's manual, you need 30 amps of fusing, so maybe there's supposed to be two 15 amp fuses and the previous owner upgraded. I don't know. And on this side, high level input, low level RCAs, which are covered up. Get these little covers off. And we have a level control. We have high pass, low pass, and off. The high pass is set to 100 hertz, low pass is set to 80 or off. And bass boost, it's either 45 hertz, 6 dB, or off. We'll switch that to off. Here's a closer look at those fins. Stand back. They will cut you like a knife. Let's check the dimensions of this beast. Uh, about 12 and a half by 10 and a half maybe 10 and three quarters, and then the height, right at two inches. One thing I wanted to verify is bridging the amplifier. Usually they'll have some notification on the amp itself, which terminals are for bridging. And typically for two channel amplifiers, it's left plus right minus, but let's check the manual and see if that's the same. Let's see. So left plus and right minus is correct. You can see the figure here, left plus, right minus. So that's what we'll go with when we bridge the amp. This is four gauge here for the power and ground. I don't usually show this on camera, but the way that I um, keep the amp from sparking 
is I use one of these test lights here. And so what I'll do is I'll hook this up to the negative terminal on the amp and then I'll hook it up to the battery source. And then what it'll do is it'll charge up the capacitors without giving us a huge spark. All right, so we'll hook it up here to the, all right, we didn't get any movement here on the light, which is a, could be a bad thing. That could mean the amp doesn't work. So let's plug it in and find out. All right, you guys are gonna see it as I see it. <clears throat> let's uh, turn on the amp, see if it works or it blows up. Oh, we have red light. Maybe it's working. All right. Let's fire up the dyno, see how it does. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the dyno tests. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. First up, let's try the stereo test. We're gonna have both channels loaded and measured at one kilohertz, rated 200 watts per channel. Here we have the amp wired up on the amp dyno for the four ohm load. Stereo, again, it's rated 200 watts per channel. I wasn't really sure what I was gonna guess this amplifier did maybe somewhere around 50 or 80 watts or so per channel and look at this 115 and 110 so it actually did a lot better than i thought it would still nowhere near the rated rms power but you know what do you expect from flea market style amplifiers you really don't expect much honestly uh, uncertified test up to clipping this is kind of interesting this will happen for this test and the two ohm test exactly the same as a certified test 115 and 110 that's unusual uh, i've seen it before when we do like mono tests and stuff that you can get exactly the same numbers but not across two different channels that's that's very odd but it is consistent so that's kind of cool dynamic uh this is the one kilohertz dynamic test so this is the ihf 202 and we got 119 and 113 now as far as efficiency goes 70 percent this is a class AB amp, so that's actually not too bad. Now we'll try out the two ohm test in stereo. It's rated 300 watts per channel. Knowing that it's not gonna get that, can we get half? Yeah, we get a little more than half. 187 and 179 at 14.09 volts. So that's um, almost impressive. Again, wait until you see the amp guts of this amp. <laughs> Uncertified, exactly the same, 187 and 179. So as soon as this amp hits 1% THD, it definitely goes ahead and spikes up to that clipping point. That's uh, very unusual for amplifiers, but this one does it. Dynamically, 201 and 189 at 14.2, and then efficiency, 61.5% at two ohms. Class AB, you do not expect much more than that. Now we'll bridge the amp for the mono test. We're gonna test this using the 40 hertz. Again, we have left positive, right negative, and it's rated 400 watts. We got 357 at 14.11. The odd thing about this amp is it's rated 300 watts per channel at two ohms. That should mean 600 watts at four ohms. That's how two channel amplifiers work, but obviously the ratings here are bogus to begin with. So, you know, it is what it is. Dynamically 348 watts at 14 volts, so it's right about the same. Doesn't have a whole lot of dynamic juice. Efficiency, 59% at four ohms mono. As far as the results go, you can pause this if you want to see all the numbers. I just showed them. Definitely not what it's rated to do, but again, this is a flea market amp, so should not expect more. Now let's hook it up to the quad box and see, do it thump though? All right, let's fill some bass, DJ Magic Mike.
right, let's try the woofer test. A lot of the rattling and sounds that you're hearing is just stuff in my garage rattling, so my apologies in advance. So you've seen the test. Let's see what's inside this little beast. Careful not to cut myself. Made in Korea. Well, there you have it, friends. Look at this. Flea market beauty. Wow. Thump for the win. You know, the first thing I thought about when seeing the inside of this amp was like, wow, why didn't they just put a plexiglass bottom on it? Because, and, and just show that, because the top of this amp's kind of ugly, but um, you can see the gold color capacitors here, 3300 microfarad, 25 volts on the input and 35 volts on the rail capacitors. But yeah, overall this amp looks really cool. So the good stuff is get your fleet on <laughs> the unique looks of the amplifier. It does have a 45 hertz bass boost, which worked nice. The low pass crossover cut out all the vocals, which is good. Four gauge power and ground, and it thumped though. You saw that with the kicker quad box. Could be better, it's not 800 watts. There's no remote for the bass control. The brand stigma of thump. You know, if you got one of these, you're not impressing your friends. Uh, the fins are gonna cut you if you're not careful, so be careful with that. And the flea market warranty, the guy's probably not going to be around. Can't find these anyway because these are like 20 years old. But there you have it, the test of the Thump T3006 for Flea Market Friday. What do you guys think about this? Did you ever have one of these? Did you ever want one? Did you ever see one at the flea market? What's your favorite brand of flea market amp? Something like that. I've got several more of these I'm going to test over the next few months. And hope you guys enjoy these tests. They're just fun. And until next time, you know where Big D is. I'm not here, but I'm out of here. Now this is a dumb test to try, especially for the do it bump dose segment, but let's try it anyway. Um, two ohms mono, we're gonna try a dynamic burst. 40 Hertz. Oh. We got our 400 Watts. 429 at 13.85. Thump T3006, not rated for two ohm mono loads, but we're gonna try it 40 hertz certified, two ohms mono, 1% THD. Whoa, we got our 400 watts. 431 at 13.97.